Hi guys and welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. If you're watching this and you don't know, Contextual Electronics is a program where we teach you how to build electronics using programs like open source software like KiCad. Um, that is a big tool that we use, but we also go over a lot of lower cost test equipment, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. Because I was talking to someone the other day actually about musical instruments, which is another another interest of mine. Uh, and so we were talking about, well, should they just go and buy the best guitar they could afford right away, or should they buy you know, the lower cost one at the beginning? And I always, always recommend that you buy the low cost one to start with. That's because uh, even though, and, and there's, there's a caveat to that, but even though uh, you might be able to afford a, a, a very, very nice guitar, again, using the guitar as an example here, you don't actually understand why it's nice, right? You don't understand what's so great about it. And I'm sure that some people out there are screaming, oh, you should go straight for the great guitar. This is just my opinion. Uh, I think you should go for the second to cheapest guitar you can find. Learn how to play on it. Make sure you're actually understanding why, uh, what makes a good sound on a guitar, right? And, and understanding that that is the method. And my personal experience with that is I used to play guitar and I had a very, very nice guitar and it still didn't, sound good. And then my friend who was very good at guitar picked it up and it sounded great. And then he picked up a bad guitar and that sounded great. And then he picked up an even worse guitar and that sounded great. And it's really more about the method. And I think the same thing applies here for test equipment. Now, let's talk about some low cost test equipment. What we use in the course is the EX330. This was recommended in uh, my buddy Dave Jones's $50 shootout for DMMs. So we use this. Uh, and what we recently announced is the Analog Discovery 2 is a, a low cost multi-tool effectively, but really we use the scope and the waveform generator the most. And I've already had people asking, well, why don't I just upgrade? Uh, we pay, uh, people pay about $215 for the, the student price for this um, as a, as a as a kit, right? So it has probes and it has the breakout board and all that other stuff. But why not just go and move up to the next level, right? Why not just go and buy a Rigol and uh, you know a waveform generator and all these things? And that's that's a great question. And or maybe why not just pay the couple thousand dollars? And I know I'm going to want a scope. And the, the answer is, well, you still want to understand the the how do you, how do you use a low cost piece of test equipment because sometimes you're going to be in a pinch sometimes you are going to use lower cost test equipment right i've used thousand dollar dmms before but i also use you know regular handheld low cost dmms on a regular basis and it's good to understand you know the limitations of one versus you know just the, the very fanciness of it another thing is if you are just getting started and you're using a you know a very very expensive piece of test equipment well, if I break this, it's fifty dollars. If I break that, it's thousands of dollars. So that's another thing where, if you're, uh, you know, it's just a little bit scary when you're getting started. I'm going to be a little bit more, um, you know, willing to try things out with a fifty dollar DMM than I would with a five thousand dollar DMM. So that's another thing. And then finally, um, using this right, and and specifically a DMM because this is, um, you know, it has a low resolution, right? I think this is three and a half digits of resolution. You're going to very quickly understand why you're what you're paying for right you get what you pay for that's the phrase um, and you're going to understand that quickly because you're going to say well, well I just want to see that next digit of resolution right oh I I can read that it's you know 1.005 milliamps but I, what what's the next digit I want to know it's like 1.5 1.0057 or 2 or whatever it is right and so that really can start to um and also ranges, right? So that's another thing on DMMs, right? So you want to get lower and lower current measurement. You want to, uh, you know, measure lower and lower currents. You want faster response times on these things. All of the things that a low cost DMM is going to, you know, you're going to realize, uh, you're going to eventually feel like you have to upgrade. And, and you'll know it when you feel it, right? So we use low cost test equipment in contextual electronics because we, you know, we have a couple things we want to buy. We want to try and keep stuff uh, costs down. Also, people are buying a lot of uh, part kits and you know getting started with that kind of stuff but it's all about you know understanding the method and really making sure you enjoy the method because another thing is that um, you know some people are really get really deep into the gear versus the method right what we really want to focus on is building that thing right so the reason to have DMMs or test equipment in general in the first place is because you're building something and you need to test it on a regular basis some people get very very deep into you know, specsmanship around the, the stuff they're buying and almost like it becomes a collector thing. What And that's that's a very interesting and fun hobby, but that's not what we're going for here. We're going for build that thing, right? You want to build that thing, and yes, you need some test equipment to get it done, but 
if you have that thing you're working towards, then when you are ready to build that very difficult piece of gear that you want to work on, right, you will really appreciate the high cost piece of test equipment. Okay, I mentioned there's a caveat for the low cost stuff. The caveat is don't buy the cheapest thing, right? So uh, there are also $10 DMMs, right? Why didn't I suggest the $10 DMMs? Well, there are some actual lower limits on you know, usability and safety and all those other things. And like I said, uh, my buddy Dave, who did the $50 shootout, he does uh, you know, kind of go over some of that stuff. Dave's great for, for a lot of that um, you know, comparing and contrasting of the low end of test equipment. Um, and I think that it is worth it to spend at least 50 bucks uh, on that kind of thing. Now, similarly, with the uh, Analog Discovery 2, in past versions of contextual electronics, we actually used an even, uh, we used some other low cost equipment, just trying things out because the low end of the scopes is, it gets pretty shady, not shady, it's, it's pretty, it's a question of whether it's even worth it, right? So we had a, a hundred dollars, I think it was 80 or a hundred dollars and it was this little tiny display. It really was an interesting piece of gear for what it was, but the bandwidth on the scope could only go up to maybe 50 kilohertz or 80 kilohertz. And similarly, similarly uh, like the DSO Nano, which is uh, you know a little handheld scope you'll see, those are about a hundred dollars. Again, you can get maybe a hundred kilohertz, but the the usability and everything about them is just not worth it. And so I've been, you know, going through these things over and over. I have a, a box full of just stuff that I will never use. And because I wanted to try these out and find the low end of test equipment, I really think, I really believe that the Analog Discovery 2 is a good low end. You can get about 10, 10 megahertz of dual channel, um, uh, dual channel scopes, you also get the waveform generator, you get the, the logic analyzer stuff. So really all together, it really brought together a lot of the things that we're doing. It has a DMM on it. I wouldn't actually recommend it for the DMM, but in a pinch, it works on its own as well. Same thing with the power supplies. It has programmable power supplies, but eh, you know, how much do you really want to use that? Anyways, um, I wanted to just go over this, you know, the, I was thinking about the analogy because of the, the equipment, or sorry, because of the instruments, and I thought it actually played pretty well into uh, test equipment as well. So, and I also wanted to, you know, reiterate that, that that's why I'm so excited about the Analog Discovery 2. If you didn't see, Contextual Electronics recently announced we actually have a deal going, and that's the, the $215 I mentioned. Uh, if you buy three months of Contextual Electronics up front, you get access to that educational pricing to get this plus the uh, the probes and the, the breakout board and all the other stuff. And really, like I said, having a DMM on hand is good as well. Uh, but for, you know, so then what, 260, 270, um, you have really have a pretty solid, um, portable, low cost, you know, capable uh, set of test gear if you buy these two things together. That stuff is, you know, and, and it's, it's really tough for people getting started in electronics, uh, understanding, you know, what they should buy, what they should have on hand. I really think that this is a great starting point. I think that from here, you will find that you'll want to hire and test equipment eventually. You'll run into problems where you need it. But I think that this will get you pretty far. So just wanted to go over all that stuff. If you have any questions, ask in the forums down below. Thanks for watching.